Okay, let's take a deeper dive into these FDI figures. And for that, we're joined by Yan Myung, economics professor at Willamette University. Welcome back to the program. We appreciate you taking time to chat with us. Thank want, you for having me, Sean. I want to begin by asking your take on the significant figures marking foreign direct investment. Right. So I think this is really a continuation of the momentum. Uh, in 2021, last year, um, the Chinese foreign uh, direct investment inbound um, has recorded 174 uh, billion, which is a 20 percent um, year on year. So I think this January data seem to indicate that the foreign investors continue to have optimistic view about China's economic growth and its market and its stability. So um, a lot more foreign investment is coming in, especially in service sector and also in high tech sector. And as you mentioned earlier, a lot of these investments comes from the BRI countries, the Bell Road Initiative countries, as well as ASEAN countries. And I think, you know, as the RCEP uh, continues to forge ahead, we probably will see more um, investment from these 14 uh, members as well. Interesting. I want to get more on the BRI in just a second, but the growth close to 11%. You talked about building on last year and optimism. The rest of the world is dealing with COVID and other nations aren't seeing such rosy numbers. Compare and contrast what is going on in China right now to say the United States and how COVID uh, is affecting FDI and other, uh, other nations. Yeah, so, um, you know, back in 2020, the global FDI plunged by about 35%. Last year, um, as a matter of fact, um, we have seen a uh, pretty strong rebound of global FDI. So um, in China's case, you know, in 2020, when the global FDI was, you know, down by 35%, China still registered a 5.7% uh, growth in the inbound FDI. And so I think 2021, um, you know, with this rising tide, uh, the global FDI has been rebounding. So China has, you know, gained again that solid mm -hmm. increase in FDI into um, China. So you're right, I think that market stability, right, that the, the fact that China was able um, to keep the coronavirus under control and the fact that its economy rebounded and had a huge, you know, internal markets and that policy pivot towards you know, domestic consumption-driven economy. So I think all these presented um, great opportunities um, for foreign investors. You know, I was in Beijing when President Xi unveiled the ambitious Belt and Road Initiative, and there was a lot of discussion on how it could really benefit China, and that kind of discussion rippled through other nations. Are we seeing that come home to roost now? And what nations specifically are investing in China, and is this part of part of China opening up that it talks about every year. Right. So I think a, a great varieties of countries that are um, along the BRI participants are investing in China, um, ranging from, you know, some of the Latin American countries. Um, as we know that, you know, China and Mexico and Argentina um, have newly, you know, celebrated their um, 50 years of, uh, you know, economic engagements. Um, and there are also a lot of, you know, ASEAN countries that are also part of the BRI are investing um, in China. So I think mostly, you know, there are a lot of the so-called market-driven um, investments into China, uh, eyeing on China's in increasing uh, markets. But at the same time, you know, China's very solid infrastructure, um, very uh, complete supply chain network, and also skilled and sizable labor force, all these also attracted many of these uh, BRI countries. Um, so I think in many uh, great, you know, uh, very effective ways that the Chinese, um, you know, sort of markets become a attraction and also the Chinese supply chain network become a supplement to many of these countries' uh, production line. So um, I can see that there's a lot of momentum being built into this. And I think, you know, we expect that the FDI will continue to rise. You know, it's no surprise, really, that a lot of investment in China is coming into the high-tech sector as well as the service sector. Give me your thoughts on why it is happening in those sectors and where do you think we're going to see the next influx of funding aimed? Right. So I think um, this really indicates that the global investors are, you know, paying attention, right, to China's policy uh, sort of direction. So um, the Chinese government has expanded the so-called catalog of industries that are, um, you know, where the FDI is encouraged. And that includes, you know, advanced manufacturing, modern services, high-tech sectors, low-carbon and green industries, and also digital economy. 
So I think you know um, foreign investors are really heating attention right to where the next growth spot for China is, and they're also coming to the central and western areas where it's also right. um, the foreign direct investment is being encouraged. Um, so pretty much, I think there's a lot of policy factors behind um, the shrinking of the negative list, uh -huh. um, you know, where foreign ownership is limited or prohibited, is also shrinking. So um, I think that also gives great incentives for foreign investors to participate uh, yeah. in China's thr thriving economy. You made some great points in the central and western portions, really seeing this as the highways and rails continue to grow as well. Yan Liang, as always, we thank you for your time and hope to chat with you again soon.